I had my camera on the tripod up on top of this table and it fell from that height and how it's completely intact with absolutely zero damage, I do not understand, but I'm very thankful. But it did jump my body temperature up a few notches. <laughs> Doesn't have that triple B tape on there. It didn't come from us. Hello! Ha! Top of the morning, friends and family. Yep, I am getting a snake today. I'm also shipping a snake out, as you saw me preparing all the shipping supplies that are dropping all over the place along with my camera. And this snake that I'm getting today is a snake that is part of a project that I've been in for about five years, and I'm basically going back to square one. And I'm gonna tell you. How, why, what, where. First, let's take a look at the snake I'm shipping out today. Oh my gosh! Ugh. Something I forgot to mention on the live stream the other night on Wednesday was that when I'm traveling, I generally lose at least one thing, even if it's just like a roll of floss or, you know, a uh, something simple. This time it was my, my tripod, my new tripod that I have, so I'm going back to my old one, that I stopped using because of how much it has the propensity to just fall over and bend and... <sighs> I really hope this camera makes it through this video. That would be great. A Mojave 100% Het Pied Male. That's somebody, one of, one of our live, uh, live streams. And he's going to his forever home today. And it works out perfect because this is actually the last snake that I'm shipping before the holiday season. And I also have to pick a snake up today too, so that's great. One trip and just get them both knocked out, so that's, that's sweet. US Arc Pen with a new logo. Little personal note. One other thing I want to tell you guys about why I'm excited this is the last snake I'm shipping out before the holiday season is that the temperatures are starting to get colder. And as I've learned over my experience in shipping reptiles, they can stand a little bit of cold, but getting too hot is more of an issue than getting a little too cold. And so the temperatures right now, I don't need to put a heat pack in because the highs are above 70 in both here and at the location that they're being received. A heat pack just creates possible and more potential issues. Now you do need one obviously at certain temperatures, but that's why I'm excited that this is probably and most likely and should be the last snake I'm shipping out until next year when temperatures start warming back up and I don't need to use heat packs again. Maybe I will, but again, uh, excited for the potential. And also just a small tip to you guys that never have shipped reptiles before or planning to, a little cool is better than too hot. Okay, I just got the notification that these, wow! She, she, he, just reached all the way to the ceiling from down here on the floor, that was amazing. Scrub pythons, that's the project that I'm talking about. And these are my two scrub pythons. Now, so what happened is that I've been raising these animals up for the last five years or so, and just found out when I tried to pair them together and they started to kind of combat in a little bit and then I kind of did a little check on them both and was like, oh, this is Frank, this was Annie, this is now Anthony. So don't knock my camera over, it's had enough of that already, thank you, oh my gosh. Two-fisted scrub python wrangling. Now you can see these boys are definitely well-tempered and so what I'm thinking is that one of these guys is gonna go to one of you guys. <laughs> there, oh, that's water. There's uh. This is fun. It's fun. A little challenging, but definitely, definitely fun. I, I'm not going to put the person who I got these snakes from on blast because I don't think they did anything wrong. And I think they actually did everything in their power to make it right once we figured out what had happened. You know, they, they didn't, they had other people helping them with sexing snakes. And um, I actually take full responsibility or at least, you know, partial responsibility for not checking myself to make sure they were actually male and female when I first got them. Uh, that was due to my inexperience and uh, and things like that. And so I'm just happy that we are finally moving forward. Of course, obviously it sucks a bit. They've been raising for the last five years and uh, it doesn't work out. But that's something that I've also wanted to put out as a 
lesson or tip for you guys to take into account that just because it happens to be like it's still gonna work it's still gonna go forward so at least they're both healthy they're both alive um, and that can go wrong too so the best laid plans you know like five years as far as reptile breeding goes kind of a short amount of time just something for you guys to think about that if you're, you're working on these projects and you got these different animal breedings you're wanting to do um, it doesn't always work out exactly the way you're hoping it's going to and you have to be ready for that and ready to take the licks where you're going to take them <laughs> even if it's just them knocking your mugs off the table and breaking them we're gonna go pick up the new animal we just got the notification that FedEx has the animal there in San Luis Obispo so we're gonna make the move and go do that so I'm excited you know, before we go to FedEx, I just realized that I have a snake up in quarantine still that has been there for, how long has it been now? It's been, when did that snake come here? It's the great thing about documenting a good portion of my life on YouTube, I can just go back and see when something specific happened. Like when I got that snake, oh, three months ago, perfect. So I like to do 90 days. June 26th actually, actually, so it was over three months ago. Coming up on four months and he's definitely been through a couple shed cycles. And the reason this is important to me is that if you bring a snake into quarantine and you have other snakes in quarantine, technically, and what that should mean is that it resets quarantine for you and you have to start over from the beginning as if it's just the first day of quarantine for every snake that's there. If you're doing a successful and actual quarantine, then that's how it works. So, that's great. We can move that snake out of quarantine and I won't have to reset for him and he can go down into the population and hang out. Let's go. And that animal is perfect because I probably owe you guys an update on this animal right about this point. So, there he is. This is the, of course, goat line from Reach Out Reptiles that Garrett, as such a great friend at the kindness of his heart, created this line just for me because I was like, if you ever make this locality into Super Dwarf, and, and work it into that project, then I, that's when I would want one. And he, he made one, and, and here it is. He's looking absolutely fantastic. He's been, of course, eating like a champion, taking down some massive meals, and uh, getting the proper amount of rest in between those massive meals. But he's looking fantastic, and still tiny as ever. It's almost like this super dwarf thing is real. Also, I totally forgot, we, we actually finally came up with a name for this guy, and the kids helped me remember exactly what it is. Eli, what's, what's this little guy's name? Shetty Spaghetti. Shetty Spaghetti. What, what is it? Shetty Spaghetti. What? Shetty Spaghetti. <laughs> Shetty, oh, it's so bright in here. Shetty Spaghetti, ladies and gentlemen. Shetty Spaghetti. Hey Eli. What? What do you what? know? I know. Snake names. What about snake names? That I named one Shetty Spaghetti and that was ridiculous. And that's weird and that's all I know. <laughs> Come on, Shetty Spaghetti, let's go. Come yeah. on, Shetty. Shetty Spaghetti, Shetty Spaghetti, Shetty Spaghetti, Spaghetti Spaghetti, Spaghetti, Shetty Spaghetti, Shetty Spaghetti, Shetty Spaghetti, Shetty Shetty Spaghetti, Shetty Spaghetti. Ooh, I think we might have a new Music Monday tune to work on. <laughs>
let's get her on home and out of this box. Some folks didn't clean up the living room floor like I asked before I got back, so they're gonna be in the background now. Clean it up. Yep, yep. Alright, snake. Your book? That's a book, not a box. But uh, you should put it somewhere where we have easy access to it because we're going to read it tonight. All right, let's see how this snake is. Daddy? A little paper towel, yes? I think we should name that snake Snake Bag. You should name this snake Snake Bag? No, I think we should name it Greenland. Greenland? Yeah. But Greenland's white. Looks good. Iceland. Uh, you guys are supposed to be cleaning up right now. Thank you very much. Well, it's not a baby, which is good. It means that we got a little bit of head start with this girl. And get her some meals. Ah! Yeah, there's no peens in there this time. <laughs> She's got some good length. She's definitely docile, which is great. Um, oh, look at that. Oh, wow. She's, she's, I'm super happy with her temperament. That's for sure. I put a lot of work into my scrub pythons to get them nice and easy to handle. Um, she seems to have had the work done already. So look at that. She's just, she's super chill, super cool. And again, if you, any of you guys are interested in one of the males that I've raised up to be super chill, then I'm not planning to keep both males. You know, you want either Frank, you want Anthony, leave a comment down below and maybe we can work something out. You guys want to name this snake Greenland? Iceland or Greenland? I don't understand the logic which, behind naming this like? snake like that. Daddy, which one would you like? I would like to get some nice footage of this snake. That's what I'd like. You guys take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Signing off. Uh, one random snake bro in California. <laughs>